On this week's edition of Chicago Football Playbook, we had 161 plays to choose from from that Lions-Bears overtime wild game. We picked three of them to break down for you, starting in the first quarter, Lions first drive, third and eight from the 20-yard line. Right now, you're looking at the Lions in their pre-snap and the Bears pre-snap formation. Let's head over to the whiteboard. The Bears brought out the dime package with Allen Ball, who only played seven snaps in the game. He's the extra defensive back, only one inside linebacker. So you kind of see where the Bears were lined up. Now, what the Lions did was they sent two players Golden Tate and Calvin Johnson pretty much downfield on their routes up the sideline against the cornerbacks. And what that did was it attracted the safeties. Harold Jones Corte helped Tracy Porter and Calvin Johnson. What was key for the making this play work for the Lions and Matthew Stafford was Adrian Amos, who went over obviously to help Kyle Fuller on Golden Tate, which left Sheriff Manis a little bit on an island with Lance Moore. Now we're not sure necessarily what Adrian Amos was supposed to be, but judging from what we've heard from Ed Donatel and Vic Fangio, Amos has been very steady. So I imagine that was his assignment to go help out on that deep route. Leo McManus with Lance Moore. Moore wasn't a simple post route, went a little out and then back in, up the seam. McManus's coverage was actually pretty okay, uh, but obviously when the ball was thrown, he was not able to make a play on Lance Moore. Big touchdown for Matthew Stafford in the Lions, as you can see in this next image. A pretty open passing lane for Matthew Stafford to hit Moore up the seam, and the Bears were not able to get much of a pass rush, and that allowed the Lions to get the first touchdown of the game. We fast forward to the third quarter for the Bears' longest play of the game. It came on third and three from their own 48-yard line. Jay Culler went with the empty set. As you're seeing right now, the Bears in their pre-snap formation. He had Alshon Jeffrey, Eddie Royal to his right. Trips left, Martellus Bennett, Marquise Wilson, and Matt Forte. Kind of an interesting play, and because Jay Cutler moved outside the pocket, we don't really know what maybe the number one, number two targets were, uh, but we can see at least what the routes were. Uh, kind of similar uh, stop-and-go routes for the Bears on this play with Matt Forte starting up this seam, going outside, then when Cutler started to move to his left, Matt Forte went back inside to help. Marty Bennett, a little bit of the same thing inside here on the right side of the formation. Alshon Jeffrey, a little bit of a square in, and Eddie Royal went around for the out. But those guys were kind of outside the play because once the pressure came from Cutler's right side, he went ahead and moved to his left. And you'll see in the second image what happened when he did that. Marquise Wilson, he had one-on-one -on -one coverage because the Lions only had a single high safety. Probably that safety recognized where Alshon Jeffrey was in the field, not paying much attention to Marquise Wilson, hoping that the cornerback could compete with Wilson downfield. But Cutler extends the play, sees Wilson open downfield, and as you see in the third image, he's got a kind of a clear path, and it's a bit of an off-balance throw, but Cutler certainly has the arm strength to get the ball downfield to Marquise Wilson, who made great concentration to get the catch for, again, the Bears' longest play of Sunday's game. We conclude this week's Chicago football playbook with the biggest play of the game for the Detroit Lions, the 57-yard bomb from Matthew Stafford to Calvin Johnson in overtime, setting up the game-winning field goal for Matt Prater. Uh, let's see what the Lions looked like pre-snap. Certainly uh, Matt Stafford under center and the tight end kind of in an H-back formation. You're thinking maybe run play here, and Stafford did do a play action rollout to his right, and here's where his receivers went. You had Lance Moore coming across the formation to his right. You had Golden Tate start in and then go out this way. So when the play ended, as Matthew Stafford is right over here, Golden Tate is here, Lance Moore is here. But the focus on the play, of course, is Calvin Johnson. Just a nine route all the way down the field. Kyle Fuller stayed with Calvin Johnson for the beginning of the play. And as Matthew Stafford rolled out and there were two receivers in this vicinity, Fuller stayed home. And as you see in this image, Fuller and Sheriff Manis are in this vicinity on Golden Tate. You had Adrian Amos, the safety kind of fouling with Moore, and Leroy Reynolds were in that vicinity, leaving Calvin Johnson alone with Harold Jones Corte, undrafted rookie safety out of Finlay College down the field. Stafford saw it, could trust Calvin Johnson go up and get that ball and chucked it downfield. And if you watch the play on tape, you'll see Tracy Porter, you know, trying to run and make a play at the last second, certainly way too late. Uh, now, you see in this final image, another idea of, the, of what it looked like with two 
players on each of the receivers, but the receiver you want two players on is Calvin Johnson. So should Kyle Fuller stay with Calvin Johnson or should someone else have followed him? We don't know. Didn't have the opportunity to ask Vic Fangio about that. Uh, but certainly, Carol jones Corte, he had the right position, but Calvin Johnson's the one that made the play, and the Lions get the 37-34 win. That'll do it for this week's edition of Chicago Football Playbook. The Bears are on by, so we are on by, but we'll see you the week after the Minnesota Vikings game to break down those big plays. Yeah.